stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. Today we have one, just one participant with us and because Jackie Lawrence has been with us in a few episodes before and because it's just going to be the two of us right here on the mat, we are going to be able to show you a few extras, possibly some breathing techniques as well, because there are fewer people to introduce over here. But before I move on with Jackie, I'd like to thank our crew, Josian Hurd, our director, and Karen Lewis on camera. Thank you so much for helping us make this episode happen. Jackie Lawrence, Jackie, you're an up-and-coming author and you're an up-and-coming actor and author, actually. <laughs> you already have a book published about martinis. Tell us a little more. Remind us about that. Well, I'm actually um, not the author, but I did help. I was a participant in okay. it. And um, I'm very excited. It was a great friend of mine who wrote the book. Right. And it's about uh, martinis and martini recipes in Miami. How did you, you worked in Miami? Oh, Bartending, yeah. Bartending, right? Mm -hmm. Did you create the martini? I Why did. Not? I mixed it myself. I've been a professional mixologist down there for about six years. And right. I just moved back up to New York, so. You're um, originally from here, right? Yeah, I sure am. And um, I, I've kind of been looking for a bartending job. I figured, you know, it got me through college. Right, right. <laughs> but you're also looking out to do a course at one of the universities here. Oh, oh yeah. you don't want to talk about you. it just yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I applied to Columbia, and I'm right. so, I'm just like praying for that letter of acceptance. I'm sure you'll get That'd it. How so when awesome. you expect it? Sometime in March or April. I have to do a little bit of meditation. I know, I know, a lot <laughs> Stay of praying. Focus. Yes, I'm sure you'll get yeah, it. Thanks. You're a bright girl, and it's <laughs> it's very important to have an open attitude. So you need to have an open mind about everything. And I'm sure you will, but just in yeah. case life takes you on a different path, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're going to always have a backup that. plan, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. It was very interesting when you talked about it. Very briefly about your book, about the uh, yeah. book where you contributed one of your martini recipes. It was interesting, so I wanted to know a little more. Maybe one of these days we'll have you create something right oh, here. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> can be can fun. it be non-alcoholic? Yeah, it alcoholic? I do virgin drinks all the time. Well, maybe we should try one of those. <laughs> Jackie, I'm going to, before, actually, I'm going to let you look at these cards first. But before we uh, start stretching, I'd like to remind our viewers that if you come on this program, if you want to come and stretch with us right here in the studios, we have a lot of help for you. Yoga Express airs Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. We air at 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Besides this yoga fitness program, 
We also have a website for you, www.yogaexpress.com, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S.com. Every now and then, the website would come up on your screen, and it will give you a good idea of what kind of topics we discuss right here, what postures we stretch right here on the mat. Jackie is going to choose some postures from the cards we have. And while she's doing that, I'm going to show you what we do is we rely on a very simple technique called 48 plus. It's just a sequence, a flowing sequence of 48 simple stretches, low impact stretches, no hijinks, no jumping around. Simple stretches that flow and transition one into the other from standing, seated, prone, and supine. We like to call it the 48 plus sequence. We also have it on a fridge magnet. Plus, if you come and stretch with us, while we still have copies of my third title, Yoga Secrets, it has eight plus two ailment specific cards inside. So you don't even have to go to the bother of creating your own sequence. We've done it all for you. All you need to do is stretch with us, either in front of the TV, at home, wherever. So, Jackie, are we ready? Yes, I think the back bends and maybe some back twists. Bends? Let's do back bends great. today. We'll do okay. twists tomorrow. Okay, Let's do cool. That. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. That's a wonderful choice, I'll Jackie. Have to come back then, huh? You <laughs> sure do. <laughs> Was it a problem getting here today? You were perfect on time, just on time. Yeah, no, it wasn't a problem. It's just um, rainy outside and cold, right, right. you know. It's nice weather. to be here. We're it's gonna, great we're to gonna be warm inside. up right here. Okay, what we're gonna do is start with a few back bends today. We're gonna start with some standing. Back bend. So Jackie and I are going to stand up, and going to, unless a camera person decides that there's a spot on the mat, so she's going to stop taping. So here's what we're going to do. First, let's get into positions. So heels together, toes slightly apart. And as you can see, we've fanned our mats out right here. If you're at home and you have two mats parallel, you're stretching with someone, make sure you leave enough arm. Um, Maybe arm's length. So let's say, Jackie, put your arm out, your left arm. Okay, so your fingertips touch, or even not touch it, just leave a little more space. Right now we're fanned out, we can also stagger ourselves. Palms in front of your chest. We're gonna do a very simple standing back bend. Engage your low back muscles, strengthen your low back and your gluteals. Your gluteals are your buttock muscles. Your pelvic region strengthen the core of your muscle groups. Inhale, take your arms up. Hasta Uttana. Hasta is hands, Uttana is raised. Look up at the raised arms. Engage your low back and tilt your pelvis just a little bit forward. Open up your chest so you can take your shoulders back. So if you want to go a little deeper into this posture, keep exhaling. Once you go past midpoint, keep exhaling and try to go back just a little more. Take your biceps behind your ears. Start exhaling as you go down. That's it. Now, if you want to take it even further, bend your knees just a little bit, and then go back. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale, and release. There is another intense back bend. We'll take you through that. When that time comes, you bring your feet apart, and you bend your knees, and you go all the way back. In fact, I believe that might be the next one. But before you get into Tiriangasan, Tiriang is intense back bend. You want to do a little bit of a side twist, just sway around a little bit to take any tension off of your low back. Okay, if you're ready, Jackie and I are going to face the front left of the mat. We're facing Carol's camera. Bring your legs out about, let's see, is that eight to 10 inches? Yes, but eight to 10 inches apart. Now remember, if you're new to back bends, and if you're not familiar with some of these stretches that we practice on camera, on air, in our studios, you want to be safe. So first of all, put your brakes on. So bring your toes in. So you want the insides of your feet parallel to each other. Place your palms on your buttocks and push your elbows back. So that already helps you open up your chest. Take your shoulders back. When you take your shoulders back, you get a wonderful massage for your trapezius. Your trapezius muscles are just between the shoulder blades. So that's the part that feels a lot of tension. You know how when we talk about carrying your, the weight of the world on your shoulders, that's literally what we're doing. We're knotting up our muscles in the, nape, in the base of the neck. Feet are about six to eight inches apart, palms on your buttocks, push your elbows back. Now, inhale, lift your chin up. So let's go up. When you go past midpoint, start exhaling, glide your palms down the back of your legs. Exhale as you do that. 
Now please feel free to bend your knees because you want to take yourself even deeper. If you want to do that, you need to bend your knees. Now try and keep the insides of your feet parallel to each other. Inhale, keep engaging your low back. Let's come up. And then as before, so typically what we do when we do back bends, we always do a forward fold. Since you wanted back strengtheners today, we're focusing more on the back, but also you want to feel a little bit of a release in your spine. So you don't want to do only back bends all the time. So do a little, slight little twisting motion in the obliques so you release any tension in your back. Okay, let's turn to face the front of the mat. Bring your right foot out to the front. Take your left foot all the way back. Very gently, let's lower, bend both your knees, lower the left knee to the ground. Uncurl your toes in the left foot. Wiggle your right foot all the way forward. Exhale, dip your hip. Now this in itself, gives you a little bit of a back bend. You need to engage your low back muscles to hold yourself upright. So what you're gonna do is place both your palms, just like Jackie did right now. Place both your palms on your right knee. Bring your elbows out, take your shoulders back, and look up. Keep inhaling, look up. Chin up, and hold. Very nice, Jackie. I can see you through the side <laughs> of my eye. Now remember to engage your low back muscles when you do that. Any back bend that you do, you want to strengthen your low back. That's the purpose of today's episode. Inhale, let's release, and let's switch legs. Now place both your palms beside the right foot. That particular posture is called Ashva Santala. Ashwini is horse. Posture literally translates to equestrian. Bring the left foot forward. Uncurl your toes in the right foot. <clears throat> Exhale, very nice. Now you want to make sure that your feet are almost, your left foot is as close as you can, uh, not close in, as in not the heel being close, but you want to keep it as parallel to the right knee, which means you're really bringing both your knees closer. That way you get a more intense stretch. Exhale and dip. And then consciously place both your palms on your left knee, bring your elbows out, open up your shoulders, engage your low back muscles, inhale, lift your chin up, open up your chest, and hold. Ashwini Mudra. Ashwa Sanchala. Ashwini is horse. You should also feel a wonderful stretch in your quad muscles on the front of the upper right thigh. Inhale, let's come out of that. And let's come down on our hands and knees in Marjari or cat. So bring both your knees together. Now remember, in the cat position, your knees are directly below the hips. Your hands are directly below the shoulders. Your toes are curled in when you start the cat position. Your fingers are nicely splayed. Marjari literally means cat. I know, Josian, you love this posture, so we're gonna dedicate this one to you. If you have cats at home or you've watched cats outside, maybe at a pet store somewhere, you should watch them when they're yawning. It's lovely to watch them. <laughs> Here's what we're going, uh, going to do. Jackie and I are now in neutral position. What we're going to do is we're going to inhale, lift our chin, chest, and buttocks up with our toes curled in, which means a torso, the middle part of the body, dips down. So you form a little concave, and then as we exhale, we'll arch our back, uncurl the toes, and dip our head down. So let's first try the inhale. Inhale and dip. Lift your chin, chest, and buttocks. Bend your elbows if you need to do. When, you, when you're doing that, if you need to bend your elbows, do that. Uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's try that one more time. The cat position is a good balance in itself, so we don't need to do any extra twists. Curl your toes in, inhale, dip your torso, lift your chin, chest, and buttocks. Bend your elbows, keep inhaling. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's come into neutral position and just make a little bit of an observation right here. How does that feel? Doesn't that feel great oh, when we do so that? Good. It feels so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what's happening, Jackie, is it's actually 
a beautiful undulation, undulating motion of the spine. So you're going in and you're going out. So that way you're strengthening your spine and you're releasing the nice. spine. So you actually feel a kind of a spinal massage right there. Let's all come on our knees. Bring your knees about hip width apart. We have another back bend, which is similar to the standing back bend. This one is called camel posture or ustra asana. Now remember, we're gonna turn at an angle to look at the front right of the mat so that Carol can pick us up on camera and you can see how we've got our feet. Now remember, if you want to keep your toes curled in, that's fine. As we grow older, the knees will feel a lot more pressure when your toes are curled in, so there's less synovial fluid, there's less, less lubrication in our joints as we grow older. That fluid dries up when you're young, it's okay. So if you want to keep your toes curled in, that's fine because it also helps, it closes the distance between your palm and your heel. So I'm gonna keep my feet flat. Jackie has her toes curled in. Aren't you, Jackie, do you wanna come forward so Carol's camera can get, no, no, that's fine, where you're facing, but just come oh, forward okay. just a little bit. Sure. That's it. So Jackie can pick you up as well. And you can keep your toes curled in. You're comfortable doing that, right? Yeah. You're young enough, you've got enough <laughs> lubrication on the knees. Place your palms on your buttocks. Push your elbows back, open up your chest. Now, Ustra Asan, Ustra is camel. I've got the tops of my feet flat. Inhale, lift your chin up, open up your chest. When you get past midpoint, start exhaling. Glide your palms down the back of your legs. Right hand reaches for the right heel. Left hand reaches for the left heel. Once you've made that connection, tilt your head back, tilt your pelvis forward, and keep exhaling. Hold it, engage your low back muscles, tighten your gluteals, gluteals if you recall are your buttock muscles. You want to hold it right there. Inhale very gently, bring your right hand and then your left back to your buttocks. Let's come up and let's sit down for just a moment. We're going to do another back bend, but we're going to do a slight bit of a forward fold just to ease any tension in the back. So let's fold over. Remember, it's these little tips that'll take you a long way. When you fold over, you fold forward, you exhale. You inhale as you come up. Let's come up. And this time we're gonna take, take you, our viewers, from the camel or ustra, I'm gonna take you through a posture called uh, Supta Vajra, supine diamond. Vajra, Vajra is diamond, Supta is supine. In fact, before we started, while we were getting the studio set up, I watched you sitting in that posture. Oh, cool. Literally, I think you had your feet out, oh. your knees were close, and you were sitting on the mat. What we're gonna do, that may be a little intense for some people on the ankles. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sit on our ankles, and we're gonna go back all the way. Supine diamond. Place very gently, keep your knees close. If you can keep your knees really close, you get a deeper workout, you get a stronger workout. But if you're tired today, forgive yourself, that's fine, you can bring your knees out. It will have, you will feel a little bit of a pull on your quad muscles. I'm gonna try and keep my knees close today. I'm gonna give it a shot. Place your left hand beside your left heel or even behind your left foot. Right hand goes behind your right foot. Very gently, make any adjustments you need to. Very gently lower the right elbow and then the left. Once your body is nicely rested, tilt your head back. Supta Vajra, supine diamond. Resist the temptation to lift your knees off of the floor. You want to keep your knees down, otherwise there's too much pressure on your ankles. Keep breathing. Don't forget, the world looks so much better upside down. <laughs> All those gobos and mics. Inhale, press with your palms, and let's come up. And let's do that little forward fold that we taught you earlier. That's to feel the release in your low back. And while you're in this position, inhale, let's come up. While we're still in this position with our knees bent, let's transition directly into pigeon posture, pigeon or capote. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna glide our left leg all the way to the back. Not that I'm very tall, but I actually can reach the block behind me. <laughs> and then wiggle your right foot forward, as far forward as you can get it. 
Now you can curl your toes in in the beginning of this posture just to take your leg back as far back as you can because when you have your toes curled in, you can help yourself fall the way back. And then once you are as far back as you can go, as far back as your leg can go, you want to keep your, the tops of your feet flat. Now, try not to tilt your body to one side, then you will feel an imbalance. So what you want to do is center yourself. Now, if centering yourself may be a little bit stressful for you today, you, need, you can put either a block under your right thigh, or you could do what I just did. I tucked my heel into the groin area, and you could sit on that. So you want to make sure that you feel comfortable when you're sitting in this position. Now, let's complete this posture. I'm, Josie and her our director has told me she doesn't feel this posture is complete unless we do a fold over. But before we do that, Josie, we're going to strengthen our low back. So the closer you bring your palms to your hips, the stronger you feel in your low back. Can you feel that, Jackie, mm -hmm. your low back? Change, yeah. You need to engage your low back muscles. Inhale, take your shoulders back, and then exhale, fold from the hip. Very nice. You can bring your arms out in front of you, as Jackie was just going to do. <laughs> now, when you bring your arms out, remember, this is not necessarily an active posture, so you can have your elbows resting on the mat. Just relax. And if you want to go a little deeper, some of you may be more flexible. This posture may be very comfortable. In fact, it may be too comfortable. If you want to challenge yourself, you bring your right foot forward, especially as you fold over, you'll feel a wonderful, delicious stretch in your abductor muscles on the outside of your upper right thigh. Inhale, let's come up. Don't go to sleep on me, Jackie. <laughs> that was relaxing. So it was. It feels yeah. good, right? Swing your left leg forward, and then let's take our right leg all the way back, just like we did on the other side. Kapot asan. Kapot is pigeon. Now curl your toes in, and you can keep pushing your right knee all the way back as far back as you can today. And then uncurl your toes. Keep the top of your feet flat, right foot flat. Now, if you want to challenge yourself even even more than the other side, you can bring your palms closer to your hips. So the closer they are, if you feel a little tired today, keep your palms in front of you. So that'll help you go deep and you won't feel too much uh, too much stress on your low back. So I'm going to keep it somewhere at midpoint and then inhale, open up your chest, lift your, lift your chin up, engage your low back muscles. Now exhale, fold from the hip. Lead with the chest. And then extend your arms out in front of you, elbows resting on the ground. And if you feel, I, I'm not sure about you, Jackie, but I always feel one side seems to cooperate a lot more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So always. that's an imbalance in our body, so you should acknowledge that. It's perfectly okay. I feel this side, I'm able to bring my left foot forward just a little more. So maybe this side mm -hmm. is cooperating a little more for me, so I'm going to try and do that. You want to make sure that your lower abdominal region presses against your left heel. Inhale, press with your palms. Let's come up. And actually, no, let's not come up all the way. Let's just take the left leg to meet the right. We'll come down all the way down into prone position, into bhujang or cobra. First, let's come down with the elbows down. Now, your toes right now are still curled in. We haven't started engaging our low back yet. When you engage your low back muscles and the tops of your feet, you're gonna be able to bring yourself up a little higher. We have about three to four minutes left. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got one, two, three more back bends. Perfect, I think we should be able to take them there. Now, <clears throat> when you're ready, press with the tops of your feet, press with your palms, and then you wanna bring your elbows close to you, bhujang or cobra, bring your elbows close. First of all, try to rest your forehead to the ground first, and then, Press with your palms, press with the tops of your feet, inhale, and let's come up. Chin and chest, keep your full, feet on the floor. And then if you want to go further, you could take your elbows, make it, uh, have your elbows go all the way up, keep them straight, and then do what Jackie's doing. Lift your head up, take your shoulders back. Remember to engage your low back muscles all the way through. Very gently, lower yourself. Then bring your arms out in front of you in Navas. Nav is boat. This is another 
really beautiful back strengthener. What you need to do, first let's get into position. Actually, no, before we get into position, I think we should help our viewers understand. What you're going to do is we're going to have both the palms facing each other. So you want to conserve your energy. So your palms are facing each other. Tops of your feet, to start off, are flat on the ground. You need to engage... Remember to engage your low back muscles and your buttock muscles at the same time as you lift your chin, chest, arms and knees off of the floor. So here's what we're going to do. Keep our palms facing each other. Inhale and lift. Now it's okay if you don't go too high. Just remember to engage your low back muscles. That's more important. You want to strengthen your back. Exhale and release. Nav is boat. Paripurna nav is full boat, which is done from a seated position. Now, archer's bow. Let's reach for the right ankle, left ankle with the left hand, right ankle with the right hand. Now, once you've made that connection, keep your chin on the floor. Bring your knees as close as you can today. If that is a little painful, it's okay to bring your knees up. But I think you'll get more of a back bend if you keep your knees closer. Now you want to make sure that your shoulders are back, chin is to the floor. Inhale, engage your low back muscles, lift your chin, chest and knees off of the floor. Keep your feet flexed. Inhale and lift. Dhanurasan. Dhanur is archer's bow. Now sometimes, some schools also recommend that you go from side to side and if you want to rock forward, and back, that's fine, that's a little difficult for me, but side to side is entirely doable. Exhale and release. Now we have about a minute left, I believe. Carol, did you say one, two minutes left? Beautiful. We have two minutes left, so what we're gonna do is, while we are gonna take you through a supine back bend, and you'll wonder how, it's called the bridge, where you lift your hips off of the floor. While we do that, I'd like to acknowledge our crew today. Josie and Hurd, our director, Carol Lewis on camera, and Richard Swanson, thank you for the amazing studio setups. Jackie and I are going to turn over on our back. Setu Bandha. Setu Bandha literally means bridge. I'm going to take off my fancy clip. If you've got anything in your hair, you want to take that off. Now remember, the purpose of today's episode is back bends. So you'll wonder how you're getting a back bend here. The idea is to engage your low back muscles. So the stronger, if you want to get stronger today, bring your heels close to your buttocks. Now please feel free to use your hands to lift your buttocks up. So your ankles, your hands should be able to reach to your ankles, Setu Bandha or bridge. Inhale, lift your buttocks all the way up. Engage your low back muscles. Tighten your gluteals, your buttock muscles. Tuck your shoulders under your back and hold it up. Now, if you want to experiment, take it a little further. Remember, engage your low back, lift your left leg. Bring the right foot to the center so you feel balanced. Take your left leg up. Very gently exhale and release. Bring your left foot to the center so you don't topple over and then take your right foot right leg all the way up. Always try and keeping in mind that your feet need to stay flexed so you get a workout in the back of the legs. Exhale and release. Let's come down very gently. Let's turn over and face the camera. On behalf of Jackie Lawrence, our director Josie and Hurd and